my full animation. So make sure you give this a title. Now I'm going to have to use this backpack down here to put items in for my other projects so I can drag them in. So here we go. I'm going to start with my first scene, the long shot, and I'm going to open the backpack and just drag each character in. It's going to copy the sprite and all the code and all the sound that comes with it. While I'm here, I'm also going to grab this backdrop and drag it in. Let me head back to my full animation, see inside. Now I open my backpack and I just drag everything in. For the backdrop, I need to click on backdrop, drag this one in. I'll get rid of the first one and I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call this long, long shot scene one. Now I'll drag all my other sprites in. You'll notice that all the sprites are appearing at the right size and position where they should be. I put in all this initializing code so it knows exactly where they should be, how big they should be, which costumes they should be on. Okay, now it's time to get the next scene. Before I do, I'm just going to delete everything from my backpack that I took out so I don't get confused on what needs to come in. Okay, looks like I'm ready to go. Save now. And let's get to my next scene, which was the mid shot. You can see inside. Let me grab this backdrop right away and drop it in. Now I'll open my backpack, drag this in. Now I can't just drag in all of Abby because I already have her. What I just need is the new pieces of code. This could get a little confusing. So I'm going to drag all the pieces in. And I need to go to Abby's sounds and drag those in too. I would hit save now, go back to the project, make sure I'm on Abby, this teacher, and I could drop it all in now. So I have a second backdrop, so let me click on backdrops, and I'll drag this in and immediately rename this mid shot scene two. Okay, go back to the code. Let me make sure I'm in the teacher's code. Let me scroll this way. So this was for the first scene. Now, and what I could even do is comment this so I don't get confused. And now I can drag in the new code. So I have this, but I can't, what I just dragged in, I can't leave it with this flag attached, right? Because when the flag attached is scene one, but this is part of scene two. So I'm going to use a broadcast message to trigger the next scene. And I'm going to broadcast the message, the last thing here from scene one, which was her saying you can't close the school. I'm going to make a new message that says scene two. I'm going to go to my backdrops. When the flag is clicked, I want it to switch to long shot scene one and when I receive scene two, I want to switch to scene two. This is why it's so important to name your code. You go back to the teacher and finish up here. So now, once I receive scene two, it does this. And I don't need to switch the yes I can code because that's a different broadcast message. I could just pop this in. I like to keep everything near each other in this scene. So I go to the sounds tab and I just drag this right in here. Now I'm going to delete all this. Yeah, that should be everything. Let's check it out. Ooh, it looks like we have a little bit of problems. So let's see what's going on. Ah, this evil villain saying yes I can, but that's from scene two. Aha, and look at that. I forgot to change the flag over. So this should happen when it receives scene two. Okay, now let's see. Okay, so the problem is she's saying her last line of scene one when he's saying his first line of scene two. So if I go to the teacher, she says, you can't close the school, but maybe I do. 
we control how long she says it for. Let's try it with this. Because before I just had a regular say, now she says it for two seconds, then we broadcast that. Let's see. All right, it all looks good. Let me grab the things I need for my third scene, the close-up. Delete so I can bring over all of Abby. Remember, it brings over all her code and all her sound, so I don't need to copy that. And this backdrop is just one of the plain blue ones from scratch. So I'm going to put it in my backpack. I just put it in. I've set the broadcast message to trigger scene three and set it up here. Now let's drag in my close-up. And she's here right now because when the flag is clicked, I need to hide her. We want all of these to be on with the event of scene three. Okay, oh, and we need it to be hidden when the flag is clicked, but we want to show it. And so we go here. Oh, and we don't want that character on the screen too at the same time. So let's add a new piece of code to both of these two. When we receive scene three, we have to hide. And I'll just drag that to the evil twin because we don't need it. I don't need to put it in the school or the other sprite because they're already hidden. Let's check it out. Great, it's all working great, and that's because I took the time in making other scenes to initialize the sprites. Now I'm ready to animate my last scene and show you what the whole thing looks like. All right, I just finished building and testing my last scene. I'm excited to show it to you. Just before I do, I wrote some instructions for someone seeing this project so they know what this is. And I also have credits. So I found the school image at this website. Um, so these were where I got those websites. I wrote that the close-up teacher was drawn by me and the sign was drawn by me. All their sprites come from scratch. Here are my sound credits. I did the voiceover. All the sound effects are from scratch. And my inspiration is not being able to be at school with all my students. I miss all of you. Okay, so. You can't close the school. Yes, I can. No, you can't. I can even make it disappear. <gasps> I think it's time for you to go back to school. And now that I'm done, I could also add it to the GW or wherever school you're at, the final animation, so all my friends can see.